of Jesus is all waiting for us. The manifestation of the sons of the living God, the daughters, sons and daughters need to be manifested in this world. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage each one of you. God is saying, you know, these are the last days. I know uh, the Bible, Joel talks about the last days. And the last days, he, he said he's going to pour down his spirit and God is pouring down his spirit upon all flesh. In regards of, you know, which faith, which background you are, what you are, God is pouring down his spirit. The enemy doesn't like that. He has brought everybody on an equal path. If you see in the church, 50 years ago, what was church? 30 years ago, 20 years ago. And now if you see, there is so much of revival taking place. If you see in the book of Acts, when the prophecy of Joel was fulfilled in the uh, book of Acts chapter 2, the spirit of God came upon the entire 120 people in the upper room. There was confusion. They were all perplexed. They were all amazed. They, they didn't know what was happening there. And a revival broke out. Because a revival broke out, everybody was wondering what is happening. You know, some people were saying something. Some people are saying mysteries of God. They are dreaming. They are drunk. They are, you know, everybody was in a state of confusion. And the entire city, that's what it says, everybody gathered around that upper room to see what was happening inside and to see why is there so much of noise. I mean, people are just praying. 120 people are praying in the upper room. But what happened? Everybody gathered to that place because it's not the prayer that gathered them. It is the sound from heaven, the gushing wind, the power of the Holy Spirit, the fire as the tongues of fire that came and landed on the heads of the disciples, the 120 people in that upper room. That is the one that uh, brought people. The entire city could hear the noise, the Everything, commotion, confusion was taking place. 3,000 people got saved. You see that revival? God is doing the same thing. There is so much of confusion. The church, you know, people are talking, this person talking, that person is talking. Nobody understanding what's happening. There's so much confusion in the world. But God is pouring down his spirit upon all flesh. And that is what is happening, revival and restoration. What restoration? If you see from the beginning of the age, when God created the heaven and the earth and before that, Lucifer. Lucifer was the archangel and inside him, the Bible says, you know, inside him were instruments. When he lifted the hands, you know, great music used to come. And I mean, he was made with great, wonderful instruments. He was a worship leader in heaven. Pride destroyed Lucifer. Yes, brothers, pride destroys. Pride has come from the enemy and it destroyed Lucifer. And anywhere if pride comes, pride goes before fall. Lucifer fell from heaven down to this earth. You will fall on, earth, on this earth. You will fall if you have pride. So Lucifer fell and then Lucifer said, okay, now what do I do? He was just trying to see what to be done. And then the seed, you know, God said, okay, I will make a man in my own image. And he made Adam and Eve. And what happened? The devil said, okay, God made Adam and Eve in his own image. Okay, I'm going to destroy that seed. From day one, from day one, the enemy is against the seed of God. 
and you and me know that Adam and Eve sinned. That seed that God created was contaminated. And the devil was very happy. God was sad. God was sad. But God was not out of ideas. God, in his foreknowledge, as I said, he knows everything. He sees everything. And everything is right before God. So God said, okay, this is what is going to happen. And I need to have a plan, a rescue, a plan of salvation. That's when, you know, he decided, okay, this is what Adam is going to do, Eve is going to do, and I'm going to do this, 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 this. I'm going to plan for Savior. But the devil was not quiet. If you see uh, when uh, uh, Noah's time, yeah, the entire world became corrupt. The enemy corrupted the seed from Adam, you know, whatever has happened. The entire known world became so corrupt. The Bible says in Genesis, it says that the sons of God and the sons of man, you know, were coming together. That's what the word of God says. So much of evil was happening and uh, abnormal birth was taking place. Abnormal relations were taking place. The demonic and the uh, people, flesh, men, women, you know, were having relationships. And the Lord had to do something. The devil destroyed the world by its corruption. And God saved Noah and his family. And that's how you see the generations came. Generations came. And then we see at the time of Moses. You know, even if you go back to the life of Abraham. Abraham, God said, I will give you a promise. But the enemy, you know, came and said, no, 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 no. Take Hagar. You know, I'm old. The servant, maid servant, take her. But God's plan was something different. But anyway, we see, you know, Isaac had come. And then we see Moses. Moses coming. And then when Moses was born, within a couple months, he, I mean, every child was ordered to be killed. What is happening today? Yeah, this is nothing new, brothers and sisters, because when someone great is being born, when someone that God has planned and purposed and sent on a mission, the devil knows. Because in the heavenlies, the angels rejoice. The heavenly beings, you know, are always rejoicing because something great is happening. Great is happening. This great man of God that is born on the earth, Moses, who's going to rescue, who's going to bring people from Egypt. You know, the, the angelic realm knows. And when the angelic realm moves around, the Demonic world watches because the spirit spirit can see each other. Yeah, spirit and physical, they cannot see. I mean, you have to go into the spirit to see what's happening in the spiritual realm. And uh, the spirit realm can see the physical realm. Yes, but the physical cannot see the spiritual. So when Moses was born, he was... All babies, not just he. Babies under the age of two. Everybody be executed. Because a great leader, a savior was born. Savior of the Israel. Yeah. He was supposed to be the one to rescue. But God had a great plan. You know, God said, okay, you want to kill Pharaoh? You want to order? Okay, I'm going to Make a plan where you're going to raise my savior. So if you see, Moses was being raised in his, 
in Pharaoh's backyard. Yeah. If you read the scriptures, Exodus, if you see, there it talks about how his own family, Pharaoh ordered everybody to be killed, but his own family in the backyard raised Moses up and he became the deliverer of the country. The entire Israel was saved and they were rescued from Egypt with signs, miracles and wonders. I mean, if Moses was killed, I guess God had to raise another deliverer, but God protected, God protected Moses and trained him up because those days Egypt was the most powerful countries in the world and uh, nobody could uh, fight Egypt. They had so many great chariots and all kinds of sophisticated weapons of those days. And uh, God knew that you know, someone very strong, very intelligent, very wise need to be taking upon Pharaoh, you know, challenging Pharaoh. So in his own house, with his own people, with his own trainers, with the same education, everything, you know, God prepared Moses and then Moses and Pharaoh face to face, God delivered the entire nation of Israel from Egypt. The same thing happened with Esther. She was, I mean, a lady, only hope of the entire Jewish race. Wherever Jews were surviving, they were ordered to be executed. Hmm. And she boldly took courage and she went to the king. Brothers and sisters, many of you are in power. Many of you have that power to change situations. You are keeping quiet. You are keeping mum. You are shutting your mouth. There is solution. There is answer for so many things in life in you. And you are keeping quiet. Because of you, things have not moved. The will of God is not being done because you have the keys to save our country. You have the keys to protect people. You have the answer for salvation of hundreds and thousands of people. You have the answer for healing of people. You have the answer for delivering from demons so many people. But you are keeping quiet. You don't want to go because you're scared. You're afraid. What will anybody think? My job will go. My boss will not be happy. My uh, minister will not be happy. My, you know, whoever in power is not going to be happy. Brothers, it's not whether they are happy or not. It is God put you in that position, given you the authority to change the situations. Yes. Because we don't take action, if we don't take actions like Esther, if Esther did not take action, that day was the day the entire Jewish race would have been eliminated. And she took authority. She said, no, I'm going to go. God's courage. You all pray. Everybody, the entire nation was fasting and praying. This season, two months, three months, the entire world has been praying, 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 praying. Oh, so much prayer is happening. And people are wondering, I'm fasting, I'm praying, this is happening, that is happening. What happened? Nothing is happening. Why is nothing happening? Because prayer alone does not work, brothers. The Jewish nation prayed, but Esther was the answer. Esther had to go. What if Esther said, oh, I'm so scared. I'm scared of the king. What if the king is in bad mood? Instead of killing the country, the nation of Israel, he will kill me first because I'm not supposed to go into the king's chamber without his permission. But I am going, barging myself into his chamber. What? No, brothers. She said, you guys pray, 
I am going to go and take a step of faith. Even if I die, I am going to die. Yeah, that's what happened with Daniel. So many people. My God will rescue me. That was their faith. So today the world is praying and praying and praying. So many things are happening. You have the answer and you're sitting down. down. Everybody is praying and you have the answer. God has poured his spirit upon all flesh, upon you. Yes, brothers, he has poured down his spirit. You have the secret of his power in you. You have the faith. You have the faith of the Son of God. You have the mind of Christ. What else do you need? Yeah, the Bible is talking about you have the mind of Christ. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, you have the answer. You have the wisdom. You know, we boast so much about uh, Israel has invented this gadget and that gadget and this technology and uh, agriculture and all kinds of inventions in the world is being done by Israel. The chosen generation, the chosen nation, they are, you know, direct access to God. Brothers and sisters, no. You are grafted. After the death of Jesus, you are grafted with Jesus. Yeah, your, your boss is Jewish. Your, uh, your God is Jewish and you are also a Jew. Yes, because you are grafted. You may be thinking, oh, I'm an SC, I'm an ST, I'm a BC. That is all, I don't want to say anything. It's not godly brothers. People have created that. But God said, you are a Jew. I've grafted you, adopted you. You are adopted. You are no more a slave. You are no more a wretched sinner. You are no more a worm. Yeah, Lord, I'm a worm. I'm filth. I'm dust. You've been praying. God is saying, no, 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 no. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yes. So brothers and sisters, yes, the Holy Spirit lives in us. Don't ever say you are wretched, you're good for nothing, I'm a sinner and all that. I mean, if you think that there is something that is bothering you, go to God and say, God, please forgive me. Get it away with it. God is saying you're righteous. God is looking at you, not at your body. God is looking at you by the blood of Jesus. You know, he's got the blood in between and looking at you, he looks through the blood of Jesus and when he looks at you, he cannot see your wretched sin. He sees this as a temple of the Holy Spirit where, I mean, it's holy, it's righteous, it's justified, purified, redeemed, brothers and sisters. Yes, Esther took that courage. Yes, answer was with Esther, not the people outside praying for Esther for three days, fasting and praying. Yes, because of that prayer, God gave strength to Esther. So I'm urging all of you, worldwide, people are praying, 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 but the answer lies with you. Take a step of faith. You know, remember Germany? I mean, the devil is after the seed. What is the seed? Abraham. You know, Abraham was a seed. And the Jewish nation, Germany, I mean, it was supposed to be executing the entire Jewish race, Hitler. Devil is after the seed. Beg your pardon. The devil is after the seed of God, the Jewish race, the Jewish nation. Because there's a solution in God's kingdom. Even if you see the life of Joseph, you know, Joseph had a solution for saving the entire known world in those days. And what happened? His own people, his own race wanted to kill them, kill Joseph. They wanted, his own brothers wanted to kill Joseph. But 
you know, God by his mercy and his love because he knows, he gave a vision to Joseph. Joseph was supposed to be the savior of the entire known world those days. And uh, the entire Egypt, the entire Israel race and the surrounding nations were blessed because of one man, Joseph. But the devil wanted to kill Joseph by the plan. 